Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Burkhardt, and thanks for tuning in to the inaugural episode of Inside the Big East on Fox Sports 1. If you're a Big East basketball fan, this is the show you do not want to miss. For the next 10 weeks, we'll bring you an all-access look at your favorite teams and their players as we take you inside one of the premier conferences in all of college basketball. It's time to go Inside the Big East. Let's go. The Big East rang in the new year with a bang. Welcome to our New Year's Eve extravaganza. With conference play underway, Bill Raftery will let you know how he sees things unfolding in the Big East. After dropping their first two Big East games, St. John's head coach Steve Lavin joins us to talk about their shot at a potential upset over Villanova. And he's been one of the brightest stars in the Big East so far. LaDonte Hinton is in the zone. How Providence is LaDonte Hinton persevered through adversity off the court, which helped shape who he is as a player today. Basketball is bigger than just going out there and playing and having fun. It's taken me from the inner city of Lansing, Michigan to where I am today. It's time to get an in-depth look at the Big East. Inside the Big East has to have onions. Oh, and it does, Raph. Don't you worry. Welcome to Inside the Big East. We're sponsored by New York Life here in our college basketball set. Got a nice little court for you, too. We're ready to rock and roll. Thanks for coming on board, along with Austin Cruz, who is here. Coach Ben Hallen is here, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Plenty to do. Why don't we get to the headlines in the Big East so far? And it's Seton Hall. They've been the story early on in this Big East conference. We know that. The Pirates knocking off St. John's on New Year's Eve. And then, hey, they handed Villanova the first loss of the season on Saturday. First time the Hall has had back-to-back -back wins over top 15 opponents since 91-92. Now, after six straight losses to finish their non-conference season, DePaul won their first two in league play, took care of Marquette and Xavier at home. Blue Demons winning their first two Big East games for the first time since 07 08. How about that? And then Butler officially naming Chris Holtman their head coach. No more interim tag. Holtman has led the Bulldogs to an 11 4 record and a ranking as high as number 15 at one point this season. Other thing we know about the Big East is this home team's doing real well. I'm talking 9 1. It has been a legit home court advantage for these teams early on, and that tells you maybe it's a pretty good and pretty deep league thus far. So often, yeah, I know it's two games so far in league play. What have we learned about it so far? Well, so much was made of the success the Big East had in their non-conference games and how would that carry over into conference play. And I think that we have seen that this is the deepest conference in college basketball. We mentioned DePaul, a team that was picked at the bottom of the conference. They go 2-0, but the storyline has been Seton Hall. This is a team that really went did very good job 10-2 in non-conference play. Didn't have a statement win. Two early opportunities against St. John's and Villanova. They outplay their opponents. They get wins. Sterling Gibbs looking like one of the best players in the conference. Kevin Willer has done a fantastic job with a number of freshmen. Desi Rodriguez, Angel Delgado, Kadeem Carrington, and Isaiah Whitehead, who actually missed those last two games. So this is going to be a very good team. Seen Hall, no doubt, the early season story. But Georgetown really came to life with a big win over Creighton on Saturday. I know you like them, Coach. I really do. I think Georgetown has won four of their last five now. They're playing really tough defense, 39% on the year, field goal percentage defense. And I like their personnel. You know, Smith Rivera is one of the best guards in the country. Josh Smith is a beast inside. I love Bowen. And then when you look at LJ Peak, he's one of the best freshmen in the Big East. A very, very good scorer. And Trawick and Hopkins bring you toughness. I love their toughness. And so I think that the combination of having very good freshmen that are playing a major role for them along with those seniors, I think they're going to be a real problem for everyone in the Big East. It could be a lot deeper than, than people think, that's for sure, Coach. Hey, we asked our very own Bill Raftery to give his predictions for the conference play. So here's the first edition of Raft's Onion Report for Inside the Big East. You, you do it, Raft, better than me. We're underway with conference play, and this is how I see things as we open up the Big East season. Well, there's so many good players right now, but I think D'Angelo Harrison... Harrison inside. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Uh, he's put this team on his shoulder. Uh, they played great basketball, getting up as high as 15th in the country. Uh, his ability to make plays at crucial times, to make big threes, mid-range game, and he's a heck of a rebounder, and he finds people. 
It has to be Georgetown. Devontae Smith Rivera is just a talented guy. You saw what he could do in the Indiana game. Had not been shooting the ball well. Now he's got that under control. You've got Josh Smith in the low box who's just dynamite. He's very tough to guard. You either double him or you pay for it. He's very solid. Finishing plays can make free throws. The freshmen that they have have stepped up beautifully. They're going to mature. They're going to be a tough out during the course of this season. Now, I think the guy that's had the hardest job is Chris Holtman. Uh, what he's been able to do as an interim coach, which is a very difficult task at times in terms of getting the team to buy in, he's done a miraculous job with that. Uh, they, they've one of the best home courts in the country and definitely in the league, uh, so they have that asset going for them. Uh, they're going to grow as a basketball team. Roosevelt Jones has made them a different dimension. Uh, they will be a tough out all season long. Alrighty, Raph, thanks. Coming up, despite growing up in a rough Michigan neighborhood and with his brother behind bars, how LaDante Hinton overcame adversity to one of the best players in the Big East. And hey, even though they've started 0-2 in league play, you can't count out St. John's. Head coach Steve Lavin joins us ahead of the Red Storm's bout with Villanova. That happens on Tuesday. There's Coach Lav getting the mic on. We'll talk to you in just a second. Inside the Big East, we're back. I was like getting tattoos. Um, 15 years old, I was, I was too young. Um, shouldn't have started, shouldn't have got one, but you know, it happened. I like to like cooking. Go to steak, uh, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, a little bit of salad. You gotta throw in some vegetables, you know. Um, I do a little bowling, I watch a lot, a little TV, not too much. But look, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm okay at pool. I enjoy going to matinees. I get an occasional Sunday with my wife, get some popcorn, and get away from basketball and the grind. Well, when there's opportunities, I enjoy exercise. My wife is a yoga instructor, so she actually put me on the yoga path 13 years ago. And it's been a lifesaver, literally, because in coming back from cancer, uh, it was the greatest form of therapy. It is a big game at the Garden on Tuesday night. Villanova and St. John's. There you see the tail of the tape, 9 o'clock Eastern, and we've got it right here on Fox Sports 1. That's a nice little segue to bring in the head coach of St. John's basketball, Steve Lavin, right? We do that kind of nice. Uh, coach, good to, good to have you with us here with Ben Howland. I'm Kevin Burkhardt, and, uh, you know, you guys have played a, a couple of hard-fought games here. It's early uh, after a good start, 0-2 in the conference. Just give me your, your state of the team right now after two games. Yeah, we're 11 and three overall, and we've had some good wins uh, at Syracuse, mm -hmm. uh, St. Mary's. I think even Long Beach State at the end of the day will be a quality win uh, once we get the big picture view come March. Uh, but we have work to do, and naturally, you don't want to get off to an 0 and 2 start in league play. Uh, but uh, overall, you know, this is a group that's improved from year to year, and uh, the schedule comes our way a little bit in February. We have to stay above. Uh, water here and survive uh, this grind in January because it doesn't get any easier with Villanova. Uh, Duke comes in in a non-conference game at Providence, at DePaul. So uh, it's a daunting task, uh, but our kids are looking forward to the challenge. Steve, I know you're off to a tough start in league at 0-2, but nobody has been better in college basketball than you at rallying your team when adversity hits. What is your message to the team as you get ready to take on Villanova, who I consider the best team in the Big East this year? Yeah, I think it's key that you uh, don't, you know, live in the peaks or valleys emotionally. Uh, the season is so long, uh, it's critical that you focus on the task at hand. Uh, let's get a little bit better each day in all facets of play, and then prepare with purpose for an upcoming opponent like Villanova. And when you have a setback or you have a series of uh, defeats, uh, those are report cards. And you have to do some self-examination, uh, be honest, uh, tell the truth, and go to work. Do the drill work after you've watched the film, uh, create better basketball habits. And really a loss is a clue uh, to a better way of doing things. And I think if you do that over the course of the season, incrementally, uh, you improve both individual players and their skill set and also collectively as a group uh, how to play better team defense uh, how to play a more close-knit uh, brand of basketball at the offensive end of the floor so we really try and stay in the moment and just focus on the task at hand hey steve what's the latest on rasheed jordan 
Rashid right now, uh, as has been announced to the media, is on a leave of absence, and uh, he's working through uh, a very challenging situation uh, with his family, uh, some personal uh, issues there, and uh, we'll have a better sense of things. Uh, you know, we want him back um, and uh, expect him to be back with us, but we also want to respect the family as they go through a very difficult time here. And uh, it's not the first time in my career uh, working with young people, as you know, uh, parents, uh, coaches, teachers. Uh, it's all about maturity. It's all about process, trying to bring forth a young person's full potential. And as a basketball family, uh, we rally around one another during difficult times. I know these kids were there for me uh, during my cancer and when I lost my father. Uh, in February of 2013. So we're also there for the kids uh, as a coaching staff and as a basketball family when they go through uh, difficult losses and tough times in their life. Steve, talk about D'Angelo Harrison. He has improved so much from his freshman year to now. It's really a credit to you and your program, how he's come along and how he's matured as a player. Yeah, D'Angelo has been lights out. You know, I call him our Reggie Jackson on the basketball court. Uh, he wants the ball in his hands in big game situations. Uh, we all know that he can shoot the ball from long range. He's a marksman. Uh, but what's impressed me most is his improved defense. And offensively, he's making good judgments. Uh, his choices, the clarity in his judgments in terms of when to take the ball to the hole, when to you know, pull up at the mid-range, uh, and when to spray the ball, distribute the ball, or share the sugar, as we like to say, when he's under <laughs> duress with multiple defenders, he's now improved at finding his teammates. So he's got the complete game, and the leadership and maturity on display is as impressive as the physical aspects of his game. Uh, he's learned how to channel that emotional fuel, that fire, and that energy in a more productive manner, and it's elevated our team as well as uh, his stock as a basketball player. He has a very bright future, not just here this season, uh, but down the line. He is the head coach of St. John's Basketball. Shared the sugar with us, I should say. Steve Lavin, best of luck against Villanova, Coach. Thank you. All right, currently up next. Currently the leading scorer in the Big East, but it wasn't always easy for LaDante Hinton. The story of how his relationship with his imprisoned brother has helped shape who he is today. He always reminds me of where I came from, and don't forget that. And always play for your family, you know, that they, they've been there for me since day one. LaDante Hinton grew up the youngest of five siblings in an impoverished neighborhood in Lansing, Michigan. Gangs, drugs, and guns were rampant, but Hinton never fell victim to his neighborhood thanks to his family. Rob Stone has more. I don't think I'll be where I am today if it wasn't for basketball. I came a long way, you know, since playing in the park, age of 10, you know, and dreaming of things like this, and for it to come to is like a blessing. LaDante, oh, bring it up. East Lansing, Michigan, folks. That's how they shoot it. I grew up in a tough neighborhood. Hinton, yes. He didn't have everything that he wanted, so it was kind of, it was kind of rough, but it was good. My older brothers play basketball in the neighborhood, and I just wanted to be like them so much that they, they put the ball in my hand at a young age. LaDante Hinton spent the most time playing with his brother, Dontrell. Both shared dreams of playing college basketball. They became each other's toughest opponents and biggest supporters. My favorite memory was just playing in front of him plenty of times and him encouraging me, and he really inspired me to play this game. And, for me, for him not to be here right now is really tough for me. In 2007, life took a dramatic turn. Police fingered Dontrell as the shooter in a drive-by that left one injured and another dead. Thank you. No further questions, John. Two different trials both ended in hung juries, but he was still convicted of assault with intent to murder. It was a, a tragic thing that happened to him, you know, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and he was sentenced to 19 years in prison. He was one of the closest people to me in this world. But he hurt so bad about his brother. He didn't retreat, but what he did was he uh, just decided to go harder with basketball. He, he refused to let anything stop him because he's seen how life can take you away from what you like to do. 
I always play for your family, you know, that they, they've been there for me since day one. That's what you play the game for. Hinton spent the next four years lighting it up on the court. The player nicknamed Buckets graduated from Eastern High School as a four-time first-team All-State selection and was the runner-up for Mr. Basketball in 2011. Just going through a lot of things in life, it makes you have a fire on your, on your back and play with a chip on your shoulder knowing that this can be taken away from you at any minute. I don't take it for granted. So you got to play every game like it's your last. In the spring of 2011, Henton committed to Providence, and the chip on his shoulder went with him. That mentality has helped him blossom into a leader and a key player for the Friars. Well, Dante was the first gentleman we recruited when I became the head coach here at Providence College. I couldn't be more proud of this young man on what he's done, uh, the identity he's brought to Providence College. He's somebody that'll go down as, as one of the all-time greats to, to wear a Fry uniform. But no amount of points or rebounds could ever replace the bond he has with his family. He hopes to one day see Dontrell in the crowd again. For him to be out there once again and, and seeing me play will mean everything to me. You know, um, I, I pray for him every night, you know, just to see him in the stands. He just told me, don't stop doing what you do. Don't stop playing ball. Don't never stop doing that. That's what you love. That's, that's what you have a passion for. So when you step on the court, play for me and play for your family. We were able to speak to Dontrell, but no recording devices were allowed. He isn't eligible for parole until August 2026. Dontrell told us LaDante is his pride and joy. He also can't help but think his unfortunate situation has helped motivate LaDante and get him to where he is now. Dontrell also used the word emotional several times when talking about what it was like watching his brother have so much success. And you know, we watch these college sports and you forget uh, these are kids yeah. sometimes, don't we? Yeah, so many of the stories that we hear about our student athletes are between the lines and X's and O's. But this is the type of story that really makes me proud to be an alumni of Providence College. College is so much about growing as a person, facing adversity, and how do you handle that? And LaDonte Henton is a perfect example of a young man who came to college with a lot of issues that have happened in his past and has become one of the best student athletes that you can imagine. Spent some time with him at Big East Media Day, articulate, well-spoken, well-dressed, talked to Coach Cooley about potentially being a, a business owner one day. Truly a great story. Nice piece getting to know one of the league stars, that's for sure. Up next, we promise you access. We are back inside the Big East. Why don't we check the women's standings so far? How about St. John's off to a rousing start, 12-1, 3-0 in the conference with Seton Hall and Xavier right up on their tail. Well, it was an eventful start to the Big East season here on Fox Sports 1. Why don't we take a look at an all-access, behind-the-scenes New Year's Eve with the Big East. All right, the Big East is a grown man league. Right, it's a grown man game. All right, we have to be the toughest team. This is the best basketball conference in the country, by far. Every night is going to be a battle and a grind. We have to believe that we're going to come in here and be the first Big East team to win on the road. So when that ball goes in the air, we are ready for the fight. All right, let's go. One, two, three, together. Come at them, defensively and offensively. On a fight now. Never forget about the offensive rebound at the end of every possession. We haven't got people on the boards like we do. No, we're not talking enough. Let me say, we're not win. talking on D. Front, don't front. Good. We got to play for them here. Get them back in the game. Let's go. Roosevelt, good luck. You too. Got to get on the offensive glass and get some second shots. Daniel Chip is the only one going to make your plays for everybody else. I swear to you, they cannot guard you if we have player movement and ball movement. Got to be a foul somewhere now, okay? I can't not ever be a foul right there. Come on! Let's go! Stop the ball! Stop the ball! Behind the tray! That was toughness. That was everything a Big East game was all about. That's what we I love that. Coach Bowen, after beating St. John's, they were fired up. Coach Allen, how would you do wearing the mic during the game? Well, it's tough. You know, I, for coaches, you have a lot of pressure, a lot of things going on. I think on the court when you're mic'd up is okay, and I think it's great television. Being in the locker room is really tough for me <laughs> because, you know, you're trying to get your team ready. <laughs> That's tough. You're in TV now, man. You got to suck it up. I'm sorry. We'll see how that goes going forward. Hey, next week on Inside the Big East, we'll shine the spotlight on the Butler Bulldogs and how their program is built on the mantra, the Butler way. Here's a preview. Our principles of being unselfish, 
of knowing our strengths and weaknesses and really having a, a mindset of improvement. We call all that the Butler way. One of the real tenets of this program for years has been a certain level of toughness and uh, physicality. But just the foundation of the school here has been like that ever since when I went to the back-to-back -back national championship. It's the method at which we can be successful. You just don't say we want to win or we need to do these things to win. You need to do these things because they're the right thing and they allow you to reach your potential. After living in Indiana for 15 years, they kind of became an adopted team for me. So obviously pulling for them, the job Coach Holtman has done in interim status has been tremendous. One of the best buildings and most unique buildings in all of college basketball. Wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see them back in the tournament. He's Dawson Crozier. He's Coach Ben Hallen. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Next week, we're going to try and get taller. I promise we're not as <laughs> short. He's just a giant. <laughs> Thanks for watching Inside the Big East. We'll see you next time. So long, everybody. Appreciate it.